I'm going to show you guys how to use Google Read and Write, which is a Chrome extension for um, for our domain, which is bapsonline.org. So you'll need to be logged into your Google Apps for Education account, which is uh, instructions can be found at uh, bafusion.org under Google Apps for Education and how to sign in. Uh, if you sign into a Chromebook, you're automatically in, signed into your Google Chrome account, so you won't need to do anything more there. If you're not on a Chromebook and you're on a desktop, you just need to make sure that you're actually signed into the internet browser itself by the little person that's up in the top right or by clicking this little button here and saying sign into Chrome. Once you have done that, you should see this R and W icon show up. And uh, once you click on it, you're going to have to accept certain terms and conditions. Once you do that, you're ready to use Google Read and Write, which in my opinion is one of the coolest extensions that you can possibly have, especially for teaching and learning. It is very neat and uh, can really help your kids. So let's start off. Uh, this is just the Wikipedia page for Broken Arrow Senior High. Just kind of show you what it can do. So if I just click on the icon for uh, Read and Write, you'll see we have a menu that pops up. We have many different options inside this menu. I'm going to go over them just briefly and then I'll show you each what they do. This is a prediction, just like on your cell phone when you start typing, it will predict the word that you're trying to say. Uh, this is hover over to read. So the simple thing this uh, software does is it reads text within the website. So if you click on this, once you hover over text, it will actually read you that text. This one here is a dictionary, so once you uh, highlight a word, you can click there and it will actually define the word. Picture different dictionary, same thing, but it shows you a picture. If you highlight text to read, you'll just click play after you highlight it and uh, it will read those words to you then. You have a pause button, a stop button. This is a fact finder, so if you want to highlight uh, something, it basically just turns that into a Google search. This is a translator, so anything that you have, um, if you highlight anything, you can have it translated. And these are your highlighting tools, okay? So you can actually, they call them study tools. You can click and you can highlight anything and then do some cool things in Google Drive with that. And I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and here's your settings and everything over here. So I'll, I'll walk you through each of these uh, kind of separately as we go. But just to show you at first how cool this is, so if we just highlight this um, paragraph here, um, and then we just say play. The campus of the senior high consists of 14 buildings, including a cafeteria, media center, and six large parking lots. Also on the... So you can see it just continues to read it. Not only highlights the paragraph it's reading, but it, it highlights each word as it reads. So uh, simply it's just a reader. And then under the settings here, we can uh, go in and change uh, some of the options that we have. Um, when it pops up. So under settings you have the option to uh, change the voice um, and on most websites this is just going to change their um, accent. It's not actually going to translate. Some websites do have that translation built in once using this and it will translate it but in most cases it's just going to change the I guess you know the way uh, the accent sounds. Uh, this is really neat. This is going to speed up or slow down uh, the reading, uh, which is really great. Um, this is where you can choose it to continuously read or just read through the highlights. And when you are messing with the translate button, this is your translation. Okay, so if you want to translate into any of these um, options, you can. So um, that is that is that is definitely uh, something that's really neat that you can have it automatically translate for your English language learners. All right, so then we just say um, OK. And you have an option for prediction over here as well. So we're out of that. But that's basically what it does simply is it just reads some text. Well, let me show you uh, some other cool features about this as well. If I want to highlight a word that I don't know what it means, I can click on uh, this picture here of the book. And it's going to give me a full dictionary of, uh, of that word. Okay. Um, I could then highlight this and have it read to me. A game played by two teams with a bad end of no. Or I can just click on them and it's just going to read. Now, if I highlight the word baseball again, I can then click on this picture, and uh, which is the picture dictionary, 
and then it'll show me um, obviously pictures that relate to the word which is really great for visual learners to know what that word actually means so those are some really cool tools so we've kind of covered these I'll talk about this prediction one a little bit later um, let me just show you how this works um, we highlight cafeteria and we go to fact finder and you'll see it just does a Google search with the word I um, that I did the highlight on all right so now let's go to um, let's say this this text right here this is a book by Ed, Edgar Allan Poe if you're reading this in class it has some uh, some more difficult um, text in here um, when it comes to vocabulary so let's go ahead and click on the read and write option right here and now we can uh, go on here and uh, do some of those highlights again so let's say I want to highlight that word um, and I want to I want to save it um, by clicking these highlighting tools so it doesn't really matter what uh, you know which one you pick um, so we highlight this word we pick it with a different color um, let's see um, let's continue down here mm, let's highlight this word we're wanting to know what all these words mean let's just for a simple word let's highlight smile um, and let's say let highlight pipe and I'm just going to show you because sometimes you won't have pictures for more difficult words it doesn't have maybe a picture for all of them but you will see what this does in just a second so let's highlight these words so basically I went through here and I just uh, kind of took some words and I highlighted them all right now you have an option right here that says vocabulary now you can only utilize this once you have words high, highlighted with these uh, study tools here so uh, when I hover over this and I say vocabulary the coolest thing about Google read and write is it associates with your Google Drive account so in just a second you're gonna see this populates with a an address that a Google Doc and if I go back to my Google Drive you'll see that this actually creates it inside my Google Drive all I'd have to do to know what it is is just to change the name here and then I'd have that associated with there but as you can see now I have the word the meaning if there is an image it show up here and then a spot that I can add some notes to so it's very cool that I can now have this um, automatic um, you know uh, vocabulary you can see smile it put me a picture in for smile and gave me all the definitions for smile I can then go through and I can uh, edit any of uh, any of this I can highlight it delete ones I don't want whatever I want you can see we don't have pictures for some more of these hard words but there is a lot of words that give you that picture dictionary Okay, um, and just like in a regular website, you can completely use Google Read and Write once you're in a Google Doc. Um, let's highlight the word happy and do the image search, and you'll see that we now have all these images. So uh, you can definitely use that there as well. So we now collected those words and we did a, a collection for um, vocabulary. One more thing that you can do as your students are reading and they do need words translated for them, they can just highlight a word and click this translator button. Once that is done, you'll see it's translated over on the side. I can click on them and it reads through all of the options. So uh, that's your translator button, which is really neat. All right, so for the last kind of cool thing I want to show you, let's hop over to this website here. Go initialize our Google Read and Write. Now, um, as you can see, this is a very busy page with lots of information um, and data. Um, let's go through here and say that I'm doing, um, you know, I'm collecting information for a research paper. And I'm going through here and I'm finding interesting facts. So say that I, you know, I like that fact. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. I'm going to come down here. Um, and let's say that this here is something good for my paper I want to highlight it and you don't have to highlight it in different colors you can highlight it in all the same colors and it would do the same thing it's just visually for you however you want to do it so let's say that that's the information I wanted from that page I can then click on this little wheel here that says collect highlights and I can choose the colors and as you can see it's going to pull up the same type of thing it's going to create a Google Doc in my Google Drive uh, that I can change the name of it creates the highlight that pulls the paragraphs that I highlighted then it cites the page that I got it from and then it puts my name and user right there as well so it's a really quick way to gather information off of websites 
Um, and it's very neat to be able to do that. Alright, so uh, we went through and I showed you how to collect those highlights. But let's say um, you're ready to collect more highlights. You just go to this uh, little window here, this little brush, and say clear highlights, and they will go away. Alright, so now um, let's say that this page is too busy for some of my students. And you have those students that get overwhelmed by all of this information, all these pictures, all this stuff. Uh, this gives you a very neat little option. Over here on the far right, you see Simplified Page. If I click on that, it's going to actually open a new window, and it's just going to take the text from that page. So now I just have the text. Now, the cool thing is I can sit here and I can simplify it even more by important information. So you can see I can get rid of some of that information so where it keeps the more specific things and gets rid of some of the repetitive things. Really neat option to be able to simplify uh, pages and websites that your students are doing research on. All right, um, and now this prediction I'm going to talk a little bit more about when we go over the Google Docs, but it pretty much just like a text message, it predicts your next words um, when you're typing into a search bar or something like that, um, and you can utilize that. But let's go back to this highlight area. Now, I'm in Google Docs, so now I can uh, show you how this kind of works, uh, and it's kind of a little bit different in a Google Doc than it is on a website. Now, you still have the same things. I can highlight words, have it read. I can highlight them get pictures, definitions, look up on the internet, have them translated. I can do all that same stuff, but we have some more options. Right here is a voice note, so if you're creating a Google Doc for your students, you can add voice notes inside that Google Doc that come up as comments. And what that does is it allows you to talk to your students about something that's going on or an expectation that you have for them. When they open up the document, they'll be able to click on it and listen to it. Or they can make voice notes on their own um, documents as well. Um, one of the ones that's uh, kind of cool is this prediction. Um, if they're typing a paper and they're not very confident with their spelling or what, what words should come next, uh, prediction is a great tool. So as you can see, I already have predictions um, without even typing. But let's just say the, and I want to say, and you can see it already populates what might come next after the, I want to say the BL and I'm wanting blue and you can see I get blue here and if I just hover over it blue. it reads the word to me now if that's the word I know that I want I just click on it and it auto populates that for me now let's go ahead and turn this off and so I have the blue so I can continue using that to type my full paper but let's look at this option right here which is speech input so if I click on speech input it's going to record what I say and it's going to type it on the paper Bird flew south for winter. And as you can see, the blue bird flew south for winter. So it will type out what you speak into the computer as well. Just notate that um, this works really great on Chromebooks or laptops that have the internal microphone. On a desktop computer, you might have to purchase a microphone to utilize this option. So, a lot of cool things that uh, Google Read and Write can do for teaching and learning. I hope that you learned a lot through this. Um, one more thing that uh, will be coming out soon is how to use Snapverter, which Snapverter is another extension that is used by Google Read and Write, which allows you to read PDFs because this program just allows you to read websites and things that are embedded in websites but PDFs themselves are most of the time locked and not allowing you to do that so Snapverter converts those into a form that can be read the coolest thing that Snapverter does is it allows you to take a picture of text maybe it's a page in a book and um, upload it to Snapverter and it will convert that into a readable document by Google Read and Write, which opens a lot of doors for usage. Hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.